Hey everybody, welcome back to the C++ SDL platformer. My name is Marty and this is part 4 in the series and today we're going to get rendering a texture with SDL. Let's open our project file and get programming. So, so we're going to right click on our sublime dash project and open that with sublime text. Along the side you'll see these neat little folders. We'll go into source, open up main.cbp by double clicking and open up renderwindow.cbp and then go into include and open up renderwindow.hpp. And I like to have my header files on the left instead of on the right. It just looks a little nicer and keeps things clear in my befuddled, muddled state of mind. You ever get it where you're programming so late that your brain just starts giving you blanks? Instead of shooting your six shooter, you're just popping off blanks? I'm going to call it Coder Fry. The effects of Coder Fry can affect a, many aspects of your life. Simple things such as speech, just basic communication with people becomes like as if you're speaking Chewbacca language. The good news is Coder Fry is temporary. It does, it's not permanent and that's a relief. So it's important to know when to bail out and abandon ship. Just for the night though. So last video, all we got going was just this nice little window that pops up right in the middle of our screen. And we can wiggle it around and we can close it. So nothing new happening there. Let's make something a little more interesting load to our screen. So go to render window.hpp. We're gonna create a new function and we shall call it load texture. So what is it gonna be? It's going to be a SDL underscore texture pointer. It's a pointer because we do not actually create the texture right here in this class render window. Where we actually create this texture is on the GPU. This texture object is actually created by SDL. So wherever they wanna put it, that's why we're just getting the pointer to it load texter and it's going to take one parameter and that's a constant character pointer and file underscore or i prefer not to use underscores midway p underscore file path so we're going to end that line with a semicolon the reason we end these things with semicolons is because this is a real programming language not python not that i'm not that i'm knocking python python's great mm. Anyways, save that, go to render window.cpp and we're gonna fill out that function. So the reason we have this HTTP file and we have this .cbp file is our main.cbp needs to be able to in some way find render window.cpp. Now, if we just deleted this HPP file, it would have no idea what we're talking about when we say render window. We need to declare that these things actually exist before we call them. And to do that, we go hashtag include render window.hpp, copy this whole thing, control C it, and then we paste it right here. This way when we write class render window, we're saying, hey, this just exists. It's out there, it exists somewhere else, but we're just saying it does exist. And that helps our compiler know exactly what's going on. So go to render window.cp. Now we have to fill out that function. Let's put this after our constructor and before our cleanup function, just because our cleanup is what we call last. So we want to structure a bit chronologically. SDL underscore texture pointer. I'm going to call it render window. And then we use the render window and then the unary scope resolution operator, which is the two colons. And that just says inside the render window class, there's a function and it's called load texture. Now hand it over. And then we just say constant character character pointer p underscore file path all right and then open up some squirrel braces inside these squirrel braces create a sdl underscore texture pointer so this is a return type the return type is actually an sdl data type which is a sdl texture so we create that within this scope and then we return it now inside curly braces whenever you exit a curly brace like so you delete everything within the curly braces unless you've allocated using the new keyword but we're not going to get into all that so we create this and then we shall return it once we do something with this texture that we're going to return set it equal to null for starters and then go texture equals img underscore load texture and where do we want to load well we want to load it to our gpu our graphics card to so store that thing on our vram and then the file we want to store is our p underscore file path add a semicolon hit enter and we're going to throw in a debugging statement right here and say if our texture is equal to a null pointer then we're just going to print out a nice message std colon colon c out failed to load a texture of course a texture and then our error message and our error message is going to be a delightful dosage of sdl underscore get error just to tell us exactly what went wrong and where it went wrong and then end the line control save that hit f7 to compile and run it on sublime 
All right, and you may have noticed from the last video that this little thing popped up right here. This thing pops up if you do something wrong. This is our debugging window in Sublime Text, and it tells us exactly where everything breaks if it does break, which, I mean, like, come on, it's probable we're going to do something wrong like we just did. So the first thing it's going to tell us is where exactly this file is. So it's in the file render window.cpp, which makes sense. It's the file we're working on. And then it tells us what line and then which character it is on. So it's on line 23, and it says, hey, image underscore load texture was not declared in the scope. Did you mean load texture? And the difference is a capital L. Very important to make, get that capital right. The second thing is it's saying, hey, and L is not declared in the scope. You need that STD because STD is an abbreviation for the standard library. And L is part of this standard library. So if we control save it and hit F7, it should work. Hey, it does work, but it gave us a warning because we forgot to do one little thing. It says, hey, warning, no return statement in function returning non-void. So saying this function should return something, but we haven't returned something. Hit enter, and we're gonna type return. We're gonna fill out the request and return texture. Control save it, and let's load a texture. So we're gonna need a texture of some kind. Let's just minimize this or just get this out of the way. Go into our folders. So go into res and then right click and go new folder create a new folder and call this one gfx or you can call it images it's up to you hit enter create another one and call this one dev so graphics is where we store our textures pngs files whatever it is we want to use and the development is where we actually store the project files for our animated characters i would recommend you use a separate i don't know how you say it it's a weird name the thing costs 15 bucks if you're on windows i highly recommend it works great everything you need is there so anyways, this is the project file. Nope, this is the wrong project file. Yeah, I, I kind of got a mess going on here. Of course I got a mess, I got noodle stew. You know, I don't really remember. I'm currently looking for the right file. I don't know where it went, it's just gone. Where is this little fugitive? Is he in one of these folders? Nope, not in there. He's in there. It's gotta be. Did I really delete it? He 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 he, probably. I told myself, with this fresh install, I wouldn't do this. I said, I said, I said, Marty, you need to keep your desktop clean, keep everything sanitized or data. It's a funny thing. I don't have it. <laughs> I found it. I tracked it down. It was a, it was a goose on the loose, but I tracked this thing down. It was hiding a little fugitive thought it could just be out there. But anyways, this is our player character. I put together this. I baked a batch of animations, so I just got the idol on the walk. So anyways, this is the character. Long story short, cut a very long story short. What we got is this folder called development. That's where we store the project files. And then the graphics is where we actually store the PNGs. And now the PNGs are, are textures and can store our tile sets and we can store our sprite sheets like so. Now, if you're interested in how to do pixel art, I might make a series about that, who knows? If you really wanna know how, just let me know. So anyways, if you wanna download these images, you can do that, it's completely fine. I'll have them on GitHub, link in the description. However, I recommend you give it a shot, make your own images. You'll be proud of yourself if you do. Anyway, so we're gonna load that file. It is in, if we look along our folders along the side, it's in res and graphics, and it's called hulkingknight.png. Or actually, let's load the ground. I've also got the ground texture. So go to me.cpp, and inside there, we're gonna create a texture. We're gonna call this thing SDL underscore texture pointer, and we're gonna call it our grass texture. And we're gonna set that equal to window.load texture, and we're gonna load res forward slash GFX forward slash ground underscore grass underscore one dot PNG. And then end that line with a semicolon. All right, so we've got a texture. We've loaded it successfully. Everything is going right. This is the taste of success. But do we really know it's loaded? Not yet. We gotta draw this. So to draw it, we just do some pixel magic and we say, computer, put some pixels here, put some pixels there. And to do that, we're gonna call a few commands to our renderer. So go to renderwindow.hpp. The first thing we're gonna do before we actually start drawing is we're gonna clear the screen. So go void clear. We're gonna create a few functions while we're at it. We're gonna go void render. And what do we, what shall we render? In this case, just a SDL underscore texture pointer. And we're gonna call this P underscore text. A semicolon and then void display. To finally display that to our screen. And control save that, go to render window dot CPP scroll down so void render window so we're going to fill it out now and with clear we're actually going to call just a one-liner 
and it will be SDL underscore render render clear pretty basic to the point and we're going to clear our renderer of everything we was remembering hit enter after that and then go void render window and then render which will take the parameter of for now it's just going to render a sdl underscore texture which will wrap that thing around an entity later on and for now it's just a texture p underscore texture texture there we go uh, it was text actually hit enter open up some curly braces and inside there go sdl underscore render copy that's a copy open up some parentheses and inside there type renderer so we're going to render to the renderer add a comma we're going to render our p underscore texture another comma a null pointer and another null now the reason we have two null pointers here is because this is the viewable portion of our texture for now we're going to say just fill the entire screen for now control save that the final thing is void render window we're going to scroll down a little bit void render window and then display to actually draw this thing to the screen open up some parentheses and then open up some square braces and inside there just type sdl underscore present renderer render present i'm not sure if it's a renderer present or it's a render either way we're gonna we're gonna take a risk and we're gonna just gonna go with our gut and we're gonna present what our renderer has to tell us add a semicolon control save that if we go to main.cbp and then in our while game running loop right after we pull for, for some events if we go window.clear first things first clear the screen second thing second window.render our grass texture a semicolon hit enter and then finally window.display to the screen control save hit f7 to compile and run it hope for an error yeah we got an error so we got an error and errors are just the best they're like they're like the meatballs to spaghetti and meatballs you want to wouldn't be programming if we didn't have errors that would just feel unnatural but anyways it's telling us it's in render window.cbp the problem is there is no such thing as a renderer there's no function called renderer it's just render f7 and that should work i hope all right and we've rendered a grass texture to our screen which is ground grass one dot png that is incredible all right so that is where we're going to leave today's episode i hope you enjoyed if you have any questions or comments just let me know down below in the comment section make sure you subscribe code like and i will see you next video where in the next video we're going to be creating an entity and we're going to get a player loading up see you in the next video but not before this quick message from our sponsor. McVan Buck. Get your McVan Buck. This is high quality. McVan Buck Trophy Mosquito is a prelude to a bigger humor book written by my dad. The stories in it are legendary and you will be doubled over laughing guaranteed. It's McVan Buck guaranteed. But the great deal is it's free. I'm doing a giveaway. I'm gonna give away 10 of these. One has been asked for and is on the way. So these things are going fast, but they're still you can still get it before the mad dash comes in like the toilet paper mad dash. So it's complete with illustrations and three humorous stories. Let's just open this thing and have a read. Once you've bagged your trophy mosquito, you can use its leather to make all sorts of useful things, like a really nice mosquito purse or handbag for your wife. This will save your wife a pointless trip to the mall to get a new purse. If you're looking for a more manly item, you can make a canteen with a built-in straw from the hide of the mosquito. This is super neat to show your hunting buddy. You'll just want to make sure you clean it out real good before drinking from your new canteen for the first time. All you gotta do to claim your McFanbuck trophy mosquito is send your name and mailing address to codegopher at gmail.com. Laughter is guaranteed.